three easy ways to protect your Binance account with higher level security. We're gonna go over how to set up Google Authenticator, whitelisting addresses, and setting up your anti-phishing code. And let's get started. All right, so we're gonna use a brand new Binance account and I'm gonna set up an account just so you can see the process as a new user to set up Google Authenticator. So now we have our new account set up. Obviously you should go through the KYC process so it makes it easier to recover your account because you can provide that personal information to Binance to say, hey, this is linked to my personal information. If I lose this information, I can recover it with my personal information. But let's not completely rely on that. But we should be more responsible by securing our account with Google Authenticator. So I'm gonna hit go to dashboard and then this pop-up security verification, enable 2FA, Google verification or phone verification. You do not want to use phone verification. That is not a good method. You want to use Google Authenticator. With phone verifications, there are SIM swaps. So if someone steals your personal information, which is very likely because there's been a lot of data breaches, they have enough information to prove that they are you to your phone company and then relink that phone number to a different device. That is a SIM swap and that's how a lot of people get their accounts hacked. You don't want that to happen to you. So I highly recommend using Google verification with Google Authenticator. So we are gonna go through Google verification, but I'm not gonna go through this process. I wanna walk you through it in case you didn't do it yet. So select security, and then we should see uh, Google Authenticator recommended, and we wanna enable this. You can get the Google Authenticator app from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And you can also get the Binance app too, link in the description. So I am an Android user, so I'm gonna use Google Play. It, you should install it directly from Google and make sure it's like the real Google site. So once you have the Google Authenticator app on your phone, we can move on to the next step. And now I have been provided a QR code. I have two methods of recovery. I can use the QR code or I can use this long string of uh, characters. Before you scan it, you should make a copy of this. You should either print it out, take a screenshot. If you choose to take a screenshot, there are many different ways to secure it. It's just a bunch of different opinions. I'm gonna give you mine. I take a screenshot and then I encrypt it and then I rename that encrypted file into like a .txt file and then I throw that file onto a hard drive with a bunch of random different files so it's very hard to find and you kind of need to find the file and then you need to figure out how to uh, decrypt it. So that is one method. Some people just like to save the image. So uh, be very careful with this Google Authenticator QR code. This is something you need to save to restore your account in case you lose your phone and you lose access to your Google Authenticator app. So that has happened. Because if you, if you delete the Google Authenticator app and then you reinstall it, you lost every code that was on there. So you need to back up these Google Authenticator codes. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of scanning it. We're on the Dan phone here. I'm gonna select Google Authenticator, scan a QR code, and then I'm going to scan it. And now I have a new line item here. It says Binance.com and then my email address and a six digit code. So the way Google Authenticator works, it generates a new six digit code every 30 seconds and it does that even when you're offline. So when you sign into your Binance account that has been secured by Google Authenticator, you're gonna need your email, your password, and the six digit Google Authenticator code, which changes every 30 seconds. So now that you saved your QR code and you've added it to Google Authenticator, we can hit next. And then this is a notification to back up your key as I mentioned. Please save this key on paper. This key will allow you to recover your Google Authenticator in case of phone loss because that happens and it takes a long time to get that recovered. This is your warning from Binance to back up your Google Authenticator code. And we did that, so select next. And then we get another email verification code. Kind of check that. And now we received an email from Binance to bind our Google Authenticator code. I'm gonna hit copy, paste it in here. Then I'm gonna go back to the app. We can see my Google Authenticator code is 165791. Uh, then we hit next. And now we have Google Authenticator enabled on Binance. This is 
Very important and congratulations, you took the first step to securing your account properly. Congrats. How to set up your anti-phishing code. So phishing is one of the most common techniques a scammer does to get your personal information. They'll pretend to be an authority from Binance or they'll send you an email saying your Binance account has been compromised. Click on this link and it sends you to not the Binance website and you're supposed to put in your personal information there. And if you do, your account is compromised and your funds can be taken. So you don't want that to happen. And you're gonna wanna turn on your anti-phishing code. Let's do that. Select enable and it gives you this warning here. Do not disclose your password, Google authentication codes or SMS to anyone, including Binance support, because a lot of people pretend to be Binance support because they want to take your funds. We don't want that to happen. So we're gonna create an anti-phishing code. Now, this anti-phishing code can be up to 20 non-special characters, and you just want to write something here that helps you determine this is the real Binance site. And you can really put anything here, so if I put hit that like button, anytime I log into Binance, I should see hit that like button. But spaces count as a special character, so no spaces. Hit that like button. Much appreciated and we can submit that and we need to use our Google Authenticator to verify the security change again. And now my anti-phishing code has been added. It's hit that like button. Anytime I log into Binance, I should see that in the anti-phishing code. And even though we're logged into our Binance account, you can see that our phishing code is censored. Now I've logged out of my Binance account and I'm gonna log back in just so you can see that anti-phishing code in action. So I'm trying to log into my Binance account and now I have to submit my email verification code and my Google Authenticator code. And since we set up that Binance phishing code, we see our email from Binance, login attempt, the IP address, since I changed my IP address for this test. And now down here, we can see our anti-phishing code, hit that like button. So that just tells us that this email is from Binance. So that's what the anti-phishing code does. Whenever you get an email, and you're curious if it's a real email from Binance or not, you set that anti-phishing code. So that's a message to yourself saying, hey, whenever I get this message from Binance and it has an anti-phishing code that I set, this is a real email from Binance. Whitelisting addresses. So you're gonna wanna whitelist the withdrawal addresses because that helps protect your account from a scammer, say someone gets a hold of your account information, they log in, they withdraw your funds to their wallet. You don't want that to happen. And you can help protect yourself against that by whitelisting the withdrawal addresses. So right now I have it off, we can enable that. Select enable. When this function is turned on, your account will only be able to withdraw to whitelisted withdrawal addresses, okay. And now I have to put in my Google verification code. Good thing we set that up, right? And now I put in the numbers and whitelisting has been enabled. Next, we need to add our whitelisted addresses. So select address management. We can add an address. Actually, let's add multiple addresses. And then you can put something like a trust wallet. So trust wallet and the type of coin you approve for it. So let's select BNB. So I put in an address, then it shows the networks that are available for this address. It's a Binance Smart Chain address and a memo if required, this one not required. And then the address origin, is it an exchange address or is it a wallet address? And then I can select my type of wallet and this is just some personal information to help you remember like where this is going. So for me, this is a MetaMask wallet address and we have that information here. And has it been whitelisted? So for label, I put trust wallet, coin, BNB. I put my Binance Smart Chain address and I put an address origin information here, which just says, hey, this is a wallet address and it's connected to my MetaMask. This is just additional personal information for you to help remember like where are these funds going to? Like what are these wallet addresses? So hit save. And to save a whitelisted address, you have to go through security verification again. You have to get an email code. Once that email code arrives, you input that here. The email arrived, I'm gonna hit copy, go back to here, paste it in, and then I'm gonna get my Google Authenticator code. Hit submit. 
and now this address has been whitelisted, no other addresses can be withdrawn to, and since whitelisting is now active, whenever you want to withdraw, you're gonna to have to add that address as a whitelisted address. So it is a little bit more work, but your funds are more secure. Bonus tips. You might wanna use a unique email address. If you're using one email address for everything, that could be a little bit dangerous because someone might know that's your email address and they might want to take that over. If they take over your email address, they could try logging into your Binance account by hitting forgot password and then a reset password process starts, which is why having Google Authenticator helps a lot. But uh, if you didn't do that, your account can be compromised. So another step you can take is creating a unique email for your Binance account. Let's say your email account name is dogsarecool52 at gmail.com. You can create another email address called dogsarecool52 binance at gmail.com. You can just add something in. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can be whatever secure combination that you can think of. Additionally, use a very complicated password. It's a password you should remember, or if you don't remember, use a password manager. And be very careful out there. All the people wanting to help you could potentially be a scammer. So you have to stay sharp. You have to work directly with the Binance accounts and people like to pose as the Binance accounts. So be extra cautious. No one from Binance will ask for your personal information to avoid phishing and phishing websites that poses Binance. Another secure thing you could do is use the Binance app, but there can also be fake Binance apps out there. So make sure you download the Binance app from binance.com. Don't directly go to the app store. Sometimes scammers like to promote their app and advertise it so it will rank higher than the official Binance app. That has happened, be very careful. So to recap, put in the extra effort to set up your Google Authenticator, back up your codes, whitelist your addresses, and set up your anti-phishing code. So whenever you get an email from Binance, you can confirm it's a real email and not a phishing email where someone's just trying to steal your information. And if you don't already have the Binance app, there is a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and this has been a Binance video.